Well, hey, sports fans. Whoops, wrong show. Hey, EVTV, this is your Amsterdam update with me, Anna Kloppenborg. And uh, what do we have going on here at the Amsterdam Warehouse this week? Well, to begin, just shoot me because uh, the YM Vancouver is not coming into port today at Rotterdam. I was all happy and excited, and it turns out, in fact, we have another week's of delay. I don't know what's going on in container ship world, but any delay always seems to be a week, always seems to be nothing anybody could have done anything about, nor could we have called on it and let him know and his customers that uh, we are in fact waiting another week on uh, port unloading. Um, you know, guys, this is uh, about the least favorite part of getting the, all these business parts together, but probably the only reason why uh, an Amsterdam warehouse actually exists. Uh, getting thousands of kilos of lithium batteries at, uh, over from America, or in fact over from Israel to America to Holland, uh, is just, uh, um, you know, it's more fun getting a root canal with a pocket knife. Is that Jack's famous <laughs> line? Anyways, guys, I'm doing everything I can to get this stuff here and distribute it to you all. I'll be sending a mail later today to everyone involved that's waiting for the parts. And uh, like I said, just shoot me. Uh, I'm trying to get this stuff here. But we will have it here. We will be having high power build with great uh, components. And uh, things will get better in the future. So uh, that's the shipping down. Let's get back to the building up. Um, what do we have going on this week? Let's start on the car side and see the 818. Or what's Ray been up to? So Ray, we have a, a rear braking system. Yeah. <laughs> the, the pads are inside and uh, now we can uh, fill up the whole system with fluid and uh, see uh, if the calipers uh, are working and uh, yeah so then we can uh, finish it with wheels and a roller and a roller now which parts are old and which are new I see a shiny red housing yeah it's refurbished uh, calipers and uh, with paint and some new uh, brake pads and some new grease and that's, that's about it, and the discs are also um, donors, but uh, in good state, so it will work for now. Maybe later on uh, ventilated discs for better performance braking, and heat. Uh, yeah. But, uh, yeah. We will see. We'll definitely get to see. So you see there's the new shock and wheel mount suspension systems from Factory 5. We have the donor wheels and we personally refurbished them by we, we mean Ray, the complete braking system. Next week we should have it filled with braking fluid, etc. And hopefully have a motor mounted to a transmission so we can get the final sets of mounts in. 818 updates. It's a week at a time. <laughs> hey, Ray. Oh. What just happened, man? I thought today was hangover day, but something big just happened here? Okay. We've, got, uh, we've got a car with uh, X legs. <laughs> <laughs> but she's got legs. She she's is... got legs and she's standing on the, on the floor. On the and uh, one part of the, the left, right of the left uh, part of the car wants to go left and the uh, right car uh, part of the car wants to go to the right so it needs some uh, adjustment still but uh, we've got some uh, improvements <laughs> more improvement on the 818 and uh, next week uh, hopeful uh, maybe at the end of the week uh, the gearbox and motor in and then we've got some more car than ever. <laughs> so hangover day is thumbs up day? Yeah. <laughs> cool, man. Sure. 
So there you see, it's a step-by-step -step process. Uh, our friends over at, 81, uh, over at 818, our friends over at EV West uh, had a great video last week with their 818 drifting all over the track. Uh, a little bit jealous that they have a partnership with a certain Mr. Hansen who has a lot of uh, Factory 5 building experience and is actually did all the car part of that build and they got to focus on all the good electric stuff. We're inching closer to actually getting into the electric phase of our 818 build and uh, I'm very enthusiastic with all the good response there is in the 818 community and uh, with the EV community at large that uh, once we get her rolling and we've got some electrics going, a lot of people start paying attention to uh, what the Siemens can do in that form factor at those uh, uh, body weights. That'll be the 818. Uh, but for now, she's a, she's a project, not a roller. Our other project will never roll, but is getting a little further. Uh, the Joni. Uh, last week, we found her to be uh, cleaned in interior and ready for some form fitment on the drivetrain. But I needed to source a marine reverse system, preferably at a 3 to 1 ratio. Uh, I looked around a bit. The thing is that if you want to spend money and something's in a boat, you can spend some money. Uh, marine reverse systems are built very ruggedly and getting one new in the power ranges and reduction ranges that we're looking for is a good, you know, one and a half to two and a half thousand euros depending on uh, which brand and uh, form factor you are looking for. Then again, uh, marine reverse systems are to be found uh, refurbished uh, secondhand uh, in great condition. In this case, uh, we found a great hearth unit uh, uh, for a wonderful low price uh, of a couple of hundred euros. Uh, uh, and it fits just about perfectly. Let's take a look. So here we have the hearth marine reverse unit, which has a rather standard spline that's also used in the Volvo Penta series which we had in our Glastron but also in the Nedcraft we use the same spline and the same uh, uh, spring disc setup. And then we have a bell housing which will greatly reduce the amount of adapter plate that we'll need to get. In fact we really need more of an, yeah, an actual plate not an adapter housing so that'll be uh, really good. Here in the back, it fits nicely. We'll need to get a new rubber adapter ring. But it lines up perfectly with the shaft coming out. And the bell housing uses the same distances and measures for uh, motor mounts. So there the warp motor will reside with a plate and a back plate that has uh, uh, wings so we can mount the rear motor struts. It'll become a nice unit. Up top, the boat now has its first white clear coat and we'll be getting a nice 9010 broken white sunlight color. So that once the electric drive is installed. We have flooring with a clear plate in the center showcasing the drive. You'll also be in a nice fresh new environment. Another week of improvements for the Joni. Let's see what next week brings. Hey guys, I wanted to take a moment and uh, show this marine reverse system as it will be hooked up to the Warp 9 motor. Uh, we have a Warp 9 DC motor here. Uh, as we showed in the previous uh, film, uh, this marine reverse unit fits very nicely in the boat. It lines up well with the shaft, has the same dimensions, and I was able to find one that has uh, the right kind of motor mounts and uh, um, bell housing which will greatly help us in getting it all mounted in the boat and getting it all coupled up to the motor. Marine reverse systems are uh, uh, very ruggedly built and they come in both mechanical and hydraulic versions. We here have a mechanical reverse system, so it's forward, neutral, and reverse. 
Um, the hydraulic systems are known to be uh, uh, slightly smoother and uh, uh, um, possibly run a little quieter, uh, but we definitely have a few drawbacks as towards uh, using them with an electric motor. One is that a hydraulic reverse system needs a minimum amount of RPMs to be in gear. So even if you would shift your lever to forward, if you do not have rotation on the engine, which you generally would have with a stationary diesel or a gas engine, you do not actually get into gear yet. So you have this system where on the lever you're going forward up in the boat, yet you're not getting forward motion, so now you start hunting for uh, 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 your power, uh, which is not the greatest situation if you're trying to do some maneuvering with wind against and current against and people standing at the side watching you uh, <laughs> basically make an ass out of yourself. So for our uh, um, conversions, we actually prefer to use a mechanical reverse. Now what is the second uh, uh, advantage of that is that a mechanical reverse system does not have the extra cooling loop. We just basically put ATF in the block and make sure that we get a nice block which is over dimensioned for the horsepower requirement that we have. Uh, this block coming from a six cylinder Mercedes diesel uh, um, so it'll definitely handle the, say, max 20 kilowatts that we want to put through it uh, in this boat setup. Uh, that all means that it won't be getting so hot and we can just really uh, fill it up with ATF fluid and uh, never look back. As for coupling such a unit to our uh, uh, warp motor, uh, it's something that we have done before because both the uh, Glastron and the Nedcraft use the same kind of spline, and I've got some pictures to put up, use the same kind of spline on the marine reverse system. And you generally find these not only with the block, you can get them with different size bell housings and motor mounts, but you generally also get the uh, damper plate that originally would fit over the transmission spline and then hook up to your um, flywheel on the engine side. Now what we'll be doing is taking out this center disc and basically mating it to a coupler that fits over the warp shaft. Um, I'll put up pictures of the coupler that we used for the Glastron and uh, Nedcraft, but basically it comes out to a shaft coupling with a housing and retaining the spring clutch disc uh, 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 for that little bit of give that'll both uh, uh, give us some allowances on alignment and uh, help a little bit if there were a shock moment, say the, uh, um, the rudder, or not the rudder, the uh, prop hits something or in a fast moving boat if you're jumping from uh, uh, <laughs> wave to wave. Um, it'll in effect become a mini flywheel and then it'll be hooked up and as you can see here, by having this bell housing already, we really only need a one and a half to two centimeter plate to give us the right distance and it has the right sizes that will bolt the plate up to the front of the motor and uh, then be able to bolt it in the pattern of the bell housing. This in all in all should give us a nice compact unit that uh, uh, will fit very nicely in the Joni and uh, probably at these power ratings uh, we'll never have to take her out again. Anyways, that's what we're looking forward to. Uh, let's see how it all gets together in the coming weeks. Anyways, that's about it for our marine reverse setup. So there you see, not only does that marine reverse unit uh, fit in the boat at the right price, uh, we also got it with the uh, damper plate and the bell housing, uh, um, so it will uh, reduce the time we need to get it all hooked up to the warp motor and installed in the boat. Plus it'll keep the, the cost of components of uh, getting all uh, uh, the stuff done uh, down to a minimum. So actually very satisfied we uh, found the right unit and um, I think it'll be a real looker once we have her in the Joni, uh, uh, all cleaned and repainted uh, as one single unit. Uh, it's interesting for us how we keep coming back to this. Uh, 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 the first time we did something, it was just a, a bit of a luck with the Volvo Penta. It turned out to be the same kind of spline that we could use our original coupler from the Glastron in the uh, Nedcraft.
And now we are actually coming back to that same standard of marine reverse and finding that the uh, hearth also has, uh, you know, uh, the perfect adapter couplings, uh, the perfect uh, bell housings that we would need to keep our adapter plate to a minimum. So uh, all in all, this is starting to look like a, you know, a reproducible package uh, uh, that we can put into many different uh, diesel systems up to about 50 horsepower and uh, uh, get people going without them having to replace anything uh, further down uh, on the prop shaft or the prop itself, keeping the same gearing, uh, etc. Basically, we can do a conversion without taking the boat out of the water even. Uh, so that's pretty good. That's for the Joni. Hope to even show uh, a completely coupled system next week. Uh, let's see how fast that goes, though, uh, at our machinist. But we have another boat that we're working on this last week. Uh, the excitement does not stop on the Delta front. Uh, as you all know, we are uh, gearing up to building a new Delta, a reproduction Delta II, uh, which will be going over to EVTV proper and Jack Rickard. Uh, and um, as we are building that, um, we are also revisiting the drivetrain uh, setup. In the original Delta, the motor was at a, a high angle and basically put directly against a very short uh, a prop shaft, very thin prop shaft with a very small prop spinning very fast. Uh, we recreated that system with a pressure bearing uh, a setup and uh, basically you know, gave it all the, uh, uh, all the RPMs it originally had, but we kept finding that we have this, this growl and we have a lot of cavitation on this small prop that is spinning so very fast. And uh, basically the conclusion is that uh, even though we were able to reproduce the setup as it was originally made, the original setup just wasn't very efficient. Um, back then in the day, they built this quite quickly, right after the Second World War, using uh, you know, readily available components and basically thinking, hey, we'll put in more power, spin the prop faster, and we'll go a little faster, which is true. It's just you're not doing it very efficiently and definitely not doing it very quietly. Not that you would know this if you have a force cylinder Lotus engine going at 120 decibels, not five centimeters from your ear. It'll feel like you're going really fast and it'll sound like everything uh, is coming out of the motor and not out of the prop shaft or anything. Then 40, 50 years later, you convert to electric and you kind of find out like, hey, wait a second, spinning props at five, 6,000 RPMs, not the greatest deal. Uh, having a prop shaft, which is only 15 millimeters uh, diameter, not the greatest deal. So uh, using a slightly more modern uh, uh, naval knowledge, not our own, but the source from others, uh, the boat builders that are building the new Delta, uh, we've come out to uh, uh, completely redoing the drivetrain, flipping the motor, and uh, making a two-to-one belt-driven system that uh, uh, should definitely up our efficiency and allow for a much larger prop which is much more efficient both at low and high rpms and then now it will be at a max of two and a half thousand rpm instead of five thousand rpm this was the week that uh, uh, we got the new uh, um, motor mount system in and we went over to the boat builders to have it installed okay. yeah. Ga je naar voren? Ja, het is een nieuwe toch? Hier, 
Ja, zeg nice. maar een beetje. Kom maar even. Getjeerd. Kom maar. One Delta pack for one Delta. Nou, als de grote boom is, komen ze af. Die zie je eens aan, dus ik ga af en toe weer nodig. Mijn truth. Ik hoorde wel wat. Ik hoorde één keer pink. Ik zie nou twee oranje pink. De schroef loopt vrij blijkbaar. Nee, maar hij loopt nooit op. Ja. Maar hoe moet je Ook zo. Delta is back alive. We now have the motor mounted with a 120 kilowatt rated belt drive system. 2 to 1. Doing some final fine tune action. And we should have her in the water and tested by this week's Friday show. Looking good guys. Looking forward to some EV grins. So there you see, once again, everything came out, everything went back in, looking shiny and new. Uh, I just had a phone call that the belt is now uh, uh, fully mounted and aligned. We had some alignment issues with the belt kind of walking off or on to uh, uh, the motor, depending on which direction we were spinning. Uh, now it's been properly aligned. Not in time for a test run for this week's show, but I definitely intend to do some high-speed testing this coming week, whether holding, and uh, so we'll have some action for you on next week's EVTV segment. Hey, that's about it for our product project updates uh, this week. Uh, 818, Joni, Delta, all going forward. Uh, Jeep coming next week, E-Beetle, after that, when and if we do finally get our better place packs in. But for now, you all keep building. I'll keep building. And we'll see you soon. Take it easy.